live. Yes, welcome to yet another PCS Q&A. I'm your host, MJ Boyce, the Director of Community Outreach at PCS Grades. Boom. With me as always is the lovely Megan Harless, our resident PCS reform advocate and oh, by the way, resident BA censored for little ears in your room because we love you. We have a great show for you today because we're going to be talking about all expectations with regards to loading and packing. There's going to be some DOD updates and we've just, we're just we going to format this to actually kind of complement the trend of things that we're seeing, especially as far as those PPM goes, people. So if you know somebody who's PCSing this summer, maybe having some issues or challenges, but need those expectations set for loading day, and, uh, and the whole packing day, which can be very stressful, go ahead and tag them in the post. Go ahead and share this with your people because we all know somebody who's PCSing, right? We all know somebody who's PCSing if we aren't ourselves. And Lord have mercy if you are. We got your back. All right. So before we get to Megan and those DOD updates, I'm going to go through those housekeeping items as we do every week. Ready, set, here we go. All right, people, we've got the answers. And if we don't have the answers, guess what? We know who does. And if we don't know either of those things, we're going to take your questions for action and get back to you with an answer. Speaking of questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, shout outs, go ahead and leave those in the comments section below so that we can get back to you with an answer. And every time you engage with us, whether that's asking a question or providing those suggestions or just saying, hey, what's up, hey, everybody, thank you, or whatever. Every single time you do, you have an entry to win some Hope Design Limited stuff. And this week, what we're going to do is we're going to give away a $25 Hope Design Limited gift card so that you can pick out your own bling. Or maybe you know a family who's PCSing and you just want to give them a little PCS love. You can go ahead and spend some, some of that on them as well. So that's that. Next, we bring you the experts. Experts from U.S. Transportation Command, the moving industry, or even our... Uh, military education specialists or our advocates in the military spouse employment realm, right? We bring them to you because they have the answers, but sometimes you're going to have issues or challenges specific to you and your military family. And in those specific instances, you have two forever and always resources. Number one, your local chain of command. Number two, your local transportation office. Those are the people who know you. Those are the people who are dealing with your stuff. Those are the people who could take your issues and further them for an action. Of course, you always have PCS Grades, who's got your back. You can come to PCSGrades.com and read reviews on those movers, on for on-base housing or off-base housing or schools or so much more. It's left by and for military families, so you can leave and read reviews exclusive to military and veteran families. Who better knows our life than the other people who are living it, right? We also have area guides, we have VAH calculators, we have blogs and blogs and more blogs of official information. And also, you know, those that, that first person experience that you've gone through, trust me, our lives are bestsellers. Come check out our blog. Um, but don't do it yet, not until this is over. So any questions, comments, concerns, shout outs, leave them in the comments section below. We'll get back to you with any information or, um, or uh, any answers to questions, but also, LOL smiley faces are encouraged, but don't count as an entry to win. Um, last but not least, and I'm modifying this as the weeks go by, but let's continue to do our part, people. Let's continue to do our part because we are flattening that curve, right? We are flattening that curve. We have worn our masks. We have social distance. We have done all of that. There are still policies in place. Make sure your movers are still wearing their masks. Yes, they have to. It's a policy. It's a thing but we are flattening that curve and we are flattening Murphy with it. People remember when we flatten that curve, we flatten Murphy with it. Do you hear us Murphy? We are coming for you. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Megan for those DOD updates. Megan. Hey everybody. So we just have a couple of things today. Really the big one is the timeline that we are seeing right now with PCS moves and a lot of people needing to do a PPM, just keep in mind that depending on your location, there are a lot of places that are kind of booked right now until about mid-July timeframe. Again, it's location dependent. So you hear, you talk to friends in different groups, you know, they might have, you know, no issue getting movers assigned, other locations they're gonna be struggling. So as soon as you get your orders, get them inputted into DPS so you can get in line to get your shipment booked. 
when you are doing that, have some flexibility in your schedule. So don't be giving your landlord notice that you need to vacate at this certain time. Um, your movers might need you to be a little bit flexible with, with your scheduling if possible. So just keep that in mind. You always have the option to do a PPM as well, where you are paid 100% um, of the government's constructive cost for doing the PPM. So you can do that uh, option as well. A lot of people use UPAC or Estes, um, PACRAT or PODs. Um, some people do you know, go rent the U-Haul or Penske truck and drive stuff, but there's different options you can do that. Some folks are still hiring their own um, full service moving companies as well. But just keep in mind, we are kind of limited in capacity that we're seeing this year. And some places are struggling with getting shipments booked. Some places are booked until mid-July, as we said. So depending on what your timeline is, just be flexible or go ahead and have that um, B plan and C plan in place that you might have to flip to, to to get yourself moved from where you're at to your next location. So that's all I got for now. I'll send it back to you, MJ. Awesome. Thank you so much for those updates. And let me tell you, those contingency plans, like we are like that SpongeBob movie. Like we have plan A through Z and then we start doing double letters, double A, double. Yeah, we have to because that's the way that Murphy rolls. That is the anti-Murphy is the planning and understanding and managing your expectations, which we're actually going to talk about today. But thank you, Megan, for breaking down this policy, um, those policies for us because she does this, people, so we don't have to. She breaks it down Barney style for the peeps like me, right? Okay, so we're going to dive right in. And remember, everyone, go ahead and share this with those families that you know that are PCSing, or if you're PCSing, you know, tag them, share it, share the wealth. The info does no good, just chilling up here, okay? So we're going to dive right into those questions. Megan, are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. All right. So let's just go ahead and start with that packing day, those packing days, okay? When the movers um, and the packers arrive to your house on day one of packing, mm -hmm. what happens? So the first thing is that if you are doing a PPM, your packing days are going to look much different than uh, what we're going to discuss a little bit here. We're, we're trying to, you know, educate you a little bit on what should be happening in a normal situation. So if you're doing a PPM, obviously, you pack yourself, um, you know, sometimes you have a long lead time where you can do a little bit at a time. Sometimes you have a very short lead time where, you know, you, you pack the most valuable things first to ensure that they are packed well. And then you finally get to the end where you're just like, I don't care if that thing gets broken. I didn't need it anyway. Um, so if you're doing a PPM, obviously yourself. So if you are having a military move where you have a TSP and local agents assigned by the military, on day one of packing, your crew should show up. You do introductions. Now with COVID, there should be a COVID form um, that basically says they've been screened. No one's running a temperature. No one's having active symptoms of anything um, that they should be showing you that. And then you kind of need to give them a tour of your home. They need to see exactly what they are dealing with so they can um, kind of know what they're working with. And they know, you know, do we need to go ahead and call our company to tell them to send another packer? Or do we need to have a second day or a third day, whatever it may be. So give them a tour, let them see what's going on. If you have any requests, now would be the time to make them. So for me, I always need my kids' rooms packed first because I need my kids to stop adding things to the car pile. We can only fit so many stuffed animals in my car. Um, you know, so when our crews show up, I always say, hey, can we please start with our children's rooms and get those done first? I would like my kitchen and my master bedroom to be um, some of the last rooms to be done. I like cooking up until the very end because I hate when we have to eat out for two weeks in a row. Um, so at that point, you know, you, you kind of give them your game plan. You kind of set that tone for, you know, we're a team. We're going to do this together. You know, this is what I need to have happen first, you know, and a lot of times they'll be like, not a problem. We'll pack your kids' rooms first. Um, so that's basically like what what should be happening at the very beginning. You know, then they should be going out, getting some boxes, getting tape, bringing stuff in. They might be stacking piles of boxes maybe in the hallway or outside of the bedroom door so that way they're easily accessible to get to them to set up the next box. Uh, you know, so if you've got any requests, Now's the time to make them with the with your company, um, with your crew that is there. But that's kind of how the beginning of day one with your packing crew should go. Okay, and 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 that makes sense. Um, okay, so here's my next question: What are you supposed to do while the crews are packing? And and I ask this 
for a few reasons. Because, you know, some of us have a, a billion children running around. Some of us have just one very difficult child <laughs> or two in someone's case. Don't know who, just asking for a friend. Um, you know, some of us, you know, and, and some of us, you know, like we're, we're doing this solo. Like what, when it, what are, what do we do while the crews are packing? And, and I, I want to kind of add on to that as well. If it's just us and, you know, there's no one to split. Like, can you talk a little bit to that as well? Yeah. So the big thing is for you to be involved in the process. So don't just say, Hey, please pack my kids rooms and then go sit on the couch and turn on Grey's Anatomy and chill for the next three hours. Um, you know, it sounds like a great plan, but you really need to be involved in some form. So that can be involved as, you know, you uh, going in and checking in how the process is going. How many uh, boxes are they getting packed in a certain time frame? Are they spelling your last name correctly on the boxes where you might need to make a correction, say, oh, hey, we spell our last name this, you know, and, uh, you know, I, we've had a move where we had our last, my last name spelled three different ways. Um, you know, so it's a little confusing, um, you know, so check that out that your last name is being spelled right. Check the contents descriptions that they are putting on the boxes, because that is how your inventory forms are going to be filled out. So if you have a box that just says shoes and it has like 12 different things in it that are not shoes, it's just going to say shoes on the inventory. So make sure those content descriptions are um, as accurate as possible. So if it's shoes and it's more than just shoes, make sure it says shoes and board games and books on it. Um, you know, whatever it may be, uh, you know, so that way your inventory can be accurate. Because um, there's nothing worse than losing a box that said closet and not knowing exactly what was in it, or having trouble trying to prove there was something expensive in that box and getting reimbursed for it. So make sure whatever's in that box, at least general descriptions are used on that box, but it shouldn't just say shoes if there are games and books and hats and things in it as well. Um, I get very comfortable with awkwardness. Um, you kind of need some of that when you go through a PCS, I think, because sometimes it is awkward just sitting in your child's room on the bed while they pack around you. Um, you know, but because you feel like you kind of want to be like, shouldn't I be I, like, I feel like I should be helping like, you want me to grab that box? You want me to tape that up? Like, you know, yeah. what I mean? yeah, I, I mean, the awkwardness, I mean, because you want to be involved, so you need and you need to be available so that what they have a question, you know, like, hey, we found this thing. It seems kind of fragile. Do you want it packed in a certain way? Or uh, maybe they find something that your kids broke and your kids shoved it under the bed to hide it from you. Um, and they come to you with that. So you need to be available so that way if they have questions, they're there. But the awkwardness, I mean, I have no problem being awkward, hanging out in the bedroom while they pack as well. I mean, it's it's our stuff. It's, you know, my room. I want to make sure things are packed appropriately. I want to make sure everything is handled as it should. Um, you know, so sometimes you got to get a little okay with that awkwardness, get a little okay with some small talk, you know, like, are they from the area? Have they always packed? Do they enjoy it? Um, ask about their family. Talk about the weather. Ask about sports. Sports are a big one that I have found with Packers. Everyone has a favorite team they want to tell you all about. Everybody has a team they hate that they want to tell you all about as well. Um, you know, so it kind of helps. sucks <laughs> if the team they hate is yours. So it does, like it does. But I mean, small talk, it, it helps break up some of that awkwardness. But being there and being present lets them know that you're involved and that you care. Uh, you know, which is a very big important thing of just generally being involved in that process. Now, if you are by yourself, which happens a lot within our community, our spouses are still deployed, they had to go on their TDY and route, whatever it may be. Um, so by regulation, you cannot prohibit your crew from doing their job. So if they show up with seven packers, you can't say, please pack this one tiny bedroom first before we move on to the next room. So my game plan and suggestion is to, to have that game plan of how things could be packed. So for my home with our layout, I can have the kids' rooms packed at once because their doors are near each other and I can easily float between the two if needed to see how things are going. Um, you know, they can do the dining room and the living room at the same time and maybe even the kitchen in there because it's such an open floor plan that I can see what's going on and I can be involved with that process as well. Um, you know, so you really need to take a look at your home and figure out what does that game plan need to look like for me if I have to do this by myself and how can I best make that happen? Um, 
And that's when your crew shows up on day one and you say, hey, here's my game plan, what I need to have happen. And they say, okay, we'll go and do it. Got you. And you know, Courtney has a great question. Shout out, Courtney. Yeah. Um, content descriptions on boxes is so stressful. I kept saying I wanted it to be more specific, but they told me it's a bad idea. People will steal stuff um, and, and you know, if they see what it is and what's in the box and then follow that up with like, I wanted the Xbox label. And then they said it should stay electronics. However, the sheet did say Xbox. So yes and no ish. So like electronics, like your Xbox, your gaming systems, whatever it is that you have should be listed on the inventory by item with the serial number on it as well. Um, the box could say electronic as long as the inventory for that. So if it's box 152, if on the inventory form, it says Xbox, we, you, we switch, whatever the new ones are and all the serial numbers with them. And the box just says electronics. You can be okay with that because it's in, it's listed on your inventory sheet as it should be. Those items also should be listed on your high value form as well. Um, listing on your high value form makes that box of electronics has a high value seal on it that you sign. So it's even more protected. Um, but for, for items like that, like, yes, they need to be individually labeled on um, your inventory. Getting more specific things is like your kitchen boxes. A lot of times they just say kitchen, kitchenware, uh, kitchen glass, like what kind of glass Plates. are you talking about? You Plates, know, China, glass. there's a difference between Plates. the 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 Corel from Target and yeah. literally bone China, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of, what kind of kitchen glass are we talking about? You know, is this my bakeware? Is it my Pyrex? Is it the dishes? Is it the glassware? And so getting that to be more um, specific as to what kind of glass are we talking about here? Um, kitchenware, is this my cookware? Is it my bakeware? Again, is it our dishes? Is it my mugs? Like what is this? Um, so it, it's a little, you know, kind of game you've sort of got to play with what do we, what needs to be more specific versus what, is okay being labeled electronics as long as it's itemized um, with the item and the serial numbers on the inventory. I hope that answers your question, Courtney. Well, and I, it, and I think and I think that it wasn't so much a question as it was a personal experience. Which, by the way, people we value those because those are the things that Megan will hear about, right? And she'll take that to her Transcom Advisory Board meetings and be like, "Yo, I'm hearing about this. This person said this." This person's not the only one who says that. So I think that Courtney, shout out, was, you know, going into, you know, it's so stressful because we say, okay, can you list it like this? And they're like, no, dude, you don't want to do that. And then won't. But I guess the key here is as long as it's on the inventory, the way that it should be, that is the key. As long yeah. as it matches up with that number. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you want to make sure that box 152, that they just wrote electronics on the side of it, that box 152 on your inventory sheet says, Xbox serial number, whatever we switch serial number, whatever. Okay. So um, Courtney, shout out girl, you're on fire. Um, if you owned pampered chef, for example, shout out for anybody who does that. Um, would you want them to label it specifically? It's too late for us, but for next time. And can I just pause for a second and let me tell you, MJ, if, 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 if I'm, if my husband didn't cook, we didn't eat. If Chris didn't cook, we didn't eat. I wasn't good at it. Like I just, I'm still, it's questionable. But I'll tell you what, there's this like, I don't want to be pimp and pampered chef, but there's this magic pot is what they call it. And it's like a deep covered baker and it's stoneware, which, you know, you got to be careful with. Right. Yeah. But I can cook edible food so much so that my kids were requesting stuff from me. So if that got messed up, I would be heartbroken. And so would my kids. <laughs> so so in this specific, should we label pampered chef specifically? Um. So for me, I do. Because Pampered Chef is a, um, it can be costly, it can be expensive, it can be, I mean, I could probably fill a whole dish pack full of my Pampered Chef stuff between our, our food storage containers, my cookware, my bakeware, my stoneware, I have a lot of it, I probably fill a whole thing. So I, I, for me, I would label it Pampered Chef, but for me, I also have a full home inventory of what I have. So if a box were to go missing, that said kitchen, kitchenware, said bakeware, cookware, whatever. I've got my own inventory that I can be able to say, hey, these 7, 12, however many items didn't show up. And like on my own personal inventory, it says pampered chef, large baking sheet, pampered chef, medium baking sheet, pampered chef, 10 inch nonstick skillet, um, pampered chef, small round crock, uh, 
you know, so that way when things go missing, I know exactly what it is. I can show that was Pampered Chef. I also have pictures of it to show that it is Pampered Chef as well. So they're not trying to replace my Pampered Chef 10 inch skillet with a Walmart store brand 10 inch skillet kind of deal. Um, you know, which is why having your own inventory and knowing what you have is so, so important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Dustin, shout out, Dustin. Um, I'm wrapping my glasses in glass cookware myself, but I'm not boxing it. Can I keep them from rewrapping it as long as they know what it is? So it's going to be company dependent. So with the current regulations, the company, they're liable for anything they take possession of, regardless of who packed it. But because of that, the company is allowed to repack anything they deem necessary. So you will see some companies, if it's packed well, they'll take it as is and it'll be good. Other companies um, have a company policy that they repack everything because they are liable for it. They want to make sure it's packed their way. Um, so that's a conversation you're going to have to have with your assigned company as to what it is you want or don't want and uh, discuss it all with them. So do you think, so do you think that like, okay, Dustin, so if Dustin is currently assigned, if she's assigned a moving company, right? Like she's already mm -hmm. got that unlock. Hey girl, hey, see? You wanna say got, hi? We've got cameos hi. here all the time. Hey, <laughs> see, now you're gonna be seen by a lot of different people. So yeah. This is work from home life, people. And I'm sure you oh. all can, you all can relate. Um, we love cameos. Uh, my, 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 my mill kid 2.0, AKA what most people would refer to as their grandchild. Um, but not this chick. If, if once he starts walking, Hey, it is game on people. I'm just saying, I am just saying. Um, <laughs> but, um, so, so she would reach out to her, um, move she, coordinator. One, move coordinator and say, yeah. Hey, really quick. I'm wrapping my glasses and my cookware myself and I'm not boxing it. Can, can, can we keep it that way? And that move coordinator will, in, in a sense, be able to say, this is our policy yeah. um, and then move forward from there, I guess. Right. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, okay. Um, you know what? And I, and I love this question. I'm going to throw Jennifer's question. I promise we'll move in here because I love this. I love this because I've got fur babies and so do you. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to hear about the best ideas when dealing with pets on packing days sweet beagles. Um, but I want to make sure I do the right thing. Shout out, Jennifer. Good question. Yeah. So with having our fur babies with our pets, it's very important to secure them during these packing days. Um, dogs are sometimes a little bit more different than cats because cats are more curious. They want to get into everything. Dogs are really good at laying in the middle of the floor where you need to put a box um, type of deal. So the best thing to do is if you're able to is to um, if you have a fenced in yard for dogs, you know, let them have that good outdoor playtime, put some water out there for them. If it's hot, bring them in for some cool down time. Um, if you're able to, I mean, putting them into a bedroom that's not being packed um, at that moment and closing the door so that way they're not in the way they're not in all the chaos that's happening. If you have the ability to board them, that's always the best option because then they are somewhere else. They're being taken care of and you don't have to worry about that. You can focus on what is going on in your home and what needs to be done in your home. Um, but securing them so they're not in the way is the best thing um, because there's nothing worse than but, you know, trying to find your cat and figuring out which box they jumped into um, or your dog laying in the middle of the floor and trying to get them out of the way. So that way we can shuffle boxes around to get other things packed. Um, so just securing them so they're out of the way uh, is the best thing that you can do. For sure. And you know what? I really love this because, you know, one team, one fight, we help each other out. It's not just me and Megan. It's also you guys helping each other. So Dustin, shout out again. Uh, Dustin says she's also a beagle mom and she keeps all the pups outside in the back. And then when they're ready to go out, when the movers are ready to go out the backyard, she, they, she brings them in. Um, mm -hmm. and I think people well, all, all dogs are a special breed, but I think beagles, you know, they're a little more vocal sometimes when, when things are different. Um, mm -hmm. I did own a beagle once, once. Um, and, um, that was the last dog I had, I think. Uh, besides the one I have now, which is a giant. It's, he's a horse, really. We just passed <laughs> our dog. Just, just saying. Um, 
All right. And I'm loving these questions. I'm loving these engagements. I'm loving all of this. Uh, we are definitely going to get to your questions. I'm going to go down just in case some of the ones that we have pre-prepared answer yours, but every single one of your questions will be answered by the end of this webinar. Write it down. Hashtag it happened. All right, Megan. Next up, you have hacks for like everything. Okay. So that's a thing. Write that down. So what's something that you can, that you do between the packing and before the loading that makes the other end a little easier? Um, yeah, so um, the first thing I do is there are room labels that you can get. We There are like different colored room labels that you can get. I wish I had my roll of them um, with me, and unfortunately I do not. I think they're, they're in a box somewhere. Um, but these room labels, I'm gonna show you this page that has one on them. So, they're different colors. You put them on all your different rooms. There's, I think yellow is like kitchen. There's blue for master bedroom. Um, there's green, but they all say different rooms on them. So when they are done with the room or why they are packing, I will go around with these room labels and I will put them on the boxes. So the reason I do that is because then at delivery, I have these signs. So it's got the room label on it for the corresponding room label. I put on it what the, um, box is that it's labeled as like so girls rooms my daughter's room um there's usually boys room one which is my oldest son's room there's boys room two which is usually my younger son's room but that way they can look at it and see what's supposed to be there and then i put a list of what furniture goes in that room as well and i tape these to the door of the bedroom so that way when on delivery day when they're unloading everything it's so easy for the packers to match the boxes with the pink label to the door with the pink label. When they bring in furniture, it's too easy for them to look at the door and to say, hey, the white dresser and the white twin bed go into this room. And they're not having to ask me. It makes directing traffic and traffic management so much easier. So I can focus on checking off numbers of my inventory. And so I can focus on checking our furniture for any new damage. So that's the first thing I do between between packing times or when they're done packing all together. And I go around and I make sure Every box has a room label to where it needs to go. The second thing that I also put on our boxes is a stamp. It's a self-inking uh, personalized stamp. It has our names, our phone numbers, and our email addresses on it. And I put it on every single box. And this is for if, for some reason, a box gets shuffled into a different shipment, if our stuff has to go into storage for some reason. Um, it's got our contact info right on it. And I'm hoping that somebody, if that box shows up in somebody else's shipment, that they say, hey, there's a name and phone number on here. Let's give it a call. And they call me and they say, hey, your box with you know inventory number 132 labeled shoes showed up at our house. I'll say, here's our address. Please ship it. Where can I Venmo you money to pay for the shipping cost? Um, you know, because I want to make sure we get our stuff back. Um, you know, so those are two, the two biggest things that I really do between the packing time and the loading time. And I think that that's key. And, and just to go back to that whole stamp thing, like, let me tell you, I wish I would have known Megan like way before we met because I could have used that several times over. And I think that the people whose shipments we've also received, yeah, that happens, um, would have also probably wanted that. But in the event that let's say you already shipped out your stuff or you know somebody who's already shipped out your stuff and then they lose some stuff and you're missing something or you find somebody else's shipment in yours man head over to lost during my pcs on facebook it's a group of about what what do we have now 33 34 34 34 yeah. military families we have helped reunite other people with their stuff because you can literally go into this group and be like, all right. And it's great if you have, you know, if, if you don't have the stamp where you can deal with the person directly, you can go in there and be like, hey, people, just an FYI, I moved from this location to this location and I have this box that doesn't belong to me. The number is this and it was headed here or, you know, that. so if, if you know, yeah. What can I do? You know what I mean? We have helped reunite so many people with their items and you'll find a lot of other helpful information in there too because our girl Megan here happens to help admin that group along with a, a team of military spouses. It is, it is, it is owned by PCS grades, but it is operated by military spouses like us, right? Yeah. And so, going with that, that contact stamp, some people do labels with it. I have a stamp because that's also a job I can give my children. I show them how to do a box or two. And then my older kids, my teenager, that that's 
how he earns his keep. He stamps our stuff or he can put the labels on for his room. Um, you know, and then I can just go back and double check things. But the contact stamp, the contact label, as MJ said, is a huge thing because we've had stories in the group where people have said, you know, this item was missing for a year. I had, you know, given up, I had little hope I'd ever get it, given up on it, um, you know, and then they get a call and they say, hey, we have this item of yours and it was missing for like a year, over a year, um, you know, and they're able to get it reunited because when they finally unwrapped the item, they took the paper off of it or, um, you know, the most recent one was, was a door from their childhood home that moved around the country with them. They had put a contact label on that door when it was unwrapped. Finally, they, whoever received it unwrapped the paper to see what it was because they didn't know what this was, saw the contact label, called the family, find out that they were actually like five miles down the road from them. Um, you know, so they were able to reunite that item to the family because of having a contact label on that item. So having your, you know, just a label or a stamp of your contact info can go a long way for some peace of mind to know if something were to happen, somebody has a way to get a hold of me. They know how to get this box back to me. They know who this item belongs to, and you're more likely to receive it rather than than not having it. No, for sure. And yeah. again, totally wishing I had that so many moves ago. <laughs> but now you can share it with your daughter who is now a new milk spouse. So yeah, so you yeah. Now, the- you can pass on to the next generation. So for those of you who don't know, just an FYI, my daughter got a baptism by fire nuptials last month because her airman is fixing to deploy next month, right? So, you know, she is now part of the Mill Spouse Club. And because, you know, nobody really listens to their mom, even though PCSing is kind of my thing right now. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and hand her over to Megan or give her my computer and be like, see all these webinars? That's your goal. Watch them all. And then you'll be an expert, girl. <laughs> You're absolutely absolutely <laughs> oh man you guys are doing so awesome with these with these questions oh my gosh um okay so here's another one so let's say okay the crews they say they are done packing they're done packing what do you do i go around and i double check um there are some times where you find that maybe uh there might have been something hiding under the bed that shouldn't be and it needs to be packed so you send a child under there to fish it out Um, you double check closets you check behind doors because sometimes if a door is open they don't think to look behind it Uh, you know you might have a coat tree back there you might have you know some posters or wall things you had sitting behind the door that they didn't realize were sitting there so when they say you know like yeah that room is done we're moving on to this room go just take a second do a double check Um, open doors open cabinets, open drawers, um, you know, open everything to just double check that everything and check under beds, um, even maybe under dressers, especially in your children's rooms. Um, but just do a double check to make sure things are packed. There is nothing worse than comes load day and they go to move something, you know, or they go to close a door and all this stuff, you know, all your stacked wall art falls over or you, um, you know, your hutch. <laughs> They go to move it and they hear some jingling and they open up a drawer and there's like your fancy silverware in there um, with some other stuff that didn't get packed. So always take a moment and open up everything just to double check that things are packed and that if they miss something, it can be taken care of while they are still there in your home. No, for sure. And I just want to throw this up there. Crystal, girl, you're on fire. This is one of our spouse sponsors out of Colorado Springs. Um, she says, oh my gosh, all my pampered chef, which seems to be a theme for, for today, all my pef- pampered chef stones were stored in the drawer under my stove and I forgot to check and they were all left behind and no, I didn't get them back, which is a travesty. And I feel your pain because again, I'm not great at cooking without these magic tools, in my opinion, anyways. Um, but no, I mean, like those are places that I wouldn't think. Like, like you know how you keep, they have that little drawer and usually I think it's a broiler and again, yeah. Or a warmer or something. Yeah. yeah. Like, but we often store stuff in there because mm-hmm. space, just because space. Um, yes. and, so, and then, so that's a place that I wouldn't think to look ever. Yeah. That's where a lot of my bakeware is. My, my baking sheets, my pizza pans, like all of that stuff I put in that same drawer. Um, you know, we had a case where we had a couple of things left behind at a move too, because I, in my early years, didn't check. And, you know, we, we learn from our mistakes. And so that was a, you know, I 
forgot to check and we didn't, weren't able to get it. Um, you know, I had one move where we had something I didn't find. And then we had a person come in to clean our home because I really wanted my security deposit back from that house. Um, lots of good stories there. But I really want my security deposit back. So we put the money forth to have somebody come in and clean the home. And in their cleaning, they found some of my baking sheets that weren't packed and everything. And we literally had no room in our car to fit anything else. So my my cleaning lady got a tip in my Pampered Chef baking <laughs> sheets. Um, I was just like, do you want them? And she was just like, okay, sure. Uh, you know, so it's always important just to, when they say we're done with this room, open your stuff and double check to make sure. Um, you know, we have an attic at our house. We don't use our attic. But I know when it comes time to move out, my husband will be pulling down the attic stairs just to double check again, just to make sure nothing mysteriously wandered up there. So it's always worth double checking everything. For sure. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I'm just for the record, you know, I'm like one of those people that will leave a charger wherever I go. Like anybody's house that I'm visiting for more than five mm -hmm. hours, they have one of my chargers. Yes. You know what I mean? Like I have, I should just buy stock and chargers and stuff yeah. like that because I mean, it's like going to a hotel. I can't tell you how many shoes I've left behind most of the peels because I just can't even with them. And, and I mean, like, I just think of, you know, the housekeeping, like, man, they bank off of this chick right here because I can't even have a good lost and found going of all of, of all of MJ's shoes and, all and my shoes and my chargers, the end. <laughs> um, all right. So let's talk inventories, which is like, like the key to all things in my opinion, as far as PCSs go. So what do we need to know about them? Like what's, give me the down and dirty about the high value, about the boxed items. Give me that. Give me. Okay. So after your packing days, there should be two inventories. Now this is just packing days. We're going to discuss load day inventory in a few questions down the road, but just your packing days, you're going to have one inventory for all of your boxed items. So everything that could be fit into a box, will be on that inventory. So when you review that inventory and you're just like, why isn't my couch on here? Why isn't my bed on here? Where is my lawnmower? That comes on a later inventory, okay? So this is all your boxed items should be listed on this inventory. And this is where everything that's listed on the inventory, the, the description on there is coming directly from your boxes um, and what is listed on your boxes. So that is the first one that you will have and need to review. Your second inventory is your high value inventory. So anything that's considered high value, your anything that's generally $100 per pound, antiques, china, crystal, electronics, um, the irreplaceable, hard to replace. If you have a collection of some sort, we have a sports memorabilia collection that it, we have some signed items from various different players of my husband's teams. All of that stuff we put onto the high value inventory. Um, so those items considered high value, they get put into a box and you should have some seals, some high value inventory seals that you generally sign and get placed over um, like the, I don't know what you call them, creases, sides, seals of the box. Uh, you know, when you fold the flaps down and it meets and then like the sides, that way you know somebody didn't cut it open. That um, makes sense. And mm -hmm. steal stuff in it kind of deal. So those, those seals go on it to protect your high value items. So after packing days, you're going to have those two inventories to review, your high value one and also your boxed item inventory. That makes sense. And just a note on the high value inventory, that is going to be a separate sheet, correct? Correct. It should say high value inventory. It's got a lot of red writing on it. Um, a lot of people, a lot of companies will hand this to you and say, hey, fill this out. Some companies will want to do it for themselves. Uh, some companies, I, I've heard a lot this year, some companies saying that, you know, it's only if it's $2,000 or more, only if it's $5,000 or more. The regulation, the DTR part four appendix B, the tender of service. No, I'm wrong. It is the um, defense travel regulation, the claim liability business rules. I believe page 14 is where it starts talking about high value items in there. And it lists the criteria, the $100 per pound. I've got a little, yeah, she, I know. We just ignore her. Um, but the $100 per pound, China, Crystal, all that stuff is listed right there for you to see and you can take it and you can show it to them and say hey 
it says this, not that. Uh, you know, so always go by what's written in black and white within the regulations um, for your high value stuff. Okay, so quick question. Um, because you know some people they didn't get seals done for them and then but but you know dustin i think dustin shout out girl you're on fire too um can you reiterate what to do if the company says certain things cannot be placed on the high value list or cannot be under 100 dollars? so i go by what the regulation says so sometimes companies will push back and say you know it has to be this or it has to be that always go by what the regulation says and the regulation says 100 dollars per pound um, antiques, electronics, China, crystal, it lists a few things out there. We'll get the, I'll get the link for that regulation dropped into the comments so you guys can go and look at that wording yourself. But if your items fit within that criteria that's listed within the regulation, then I pull out the regulation, I show them, I say, hey, right here it says that I can put on my electronics on my high value inventory. It says I can put China and crystal and this item is China or crystal, you know, whatever it may be it can go on the high value inventory. If you have issues during this process, you can also contact your move coordinator um, who should know the regulations as well and should be able to make a call to your local agent to fix the miscommunication happening there. You can also call your local transportation office and ask for a QA inspector to come out and they can come out and say, no, this is the regulation, this is what it is, those items should be on there. Okay, and so, and um, our girl Stacy, our community outreach manager here at PCS Gray, she handles all the back end stuff. When you see somebody dropping links to what we're talking about, that's her. She's going to drop the link to our last webinar. And we spoke about um, dropping the regulations, like a literal cool. mic drop. Okay. Yep. So, in this instance, one of the things that you could do, you know, by educating yourself and knowing what that is, and Megan, like she said, she's going to go ahead and drop that in there. And it may not be helpful now, but it, A, will be helpful for military families that you know are moving, and B, will be helpful for your next move. My question to you, Megan, especially in instances like Dustin's, because what I'm seeing here, you know, like R Rochelle, Rochelle Mast uh, Masteller, um, you know, like we had issues last time, driver didn't want to mark down items that we were, you know, saying were on the higher value uh, mm -hmm. list. Here's the thing. Those regulations, those are the standards. That's the baseline. They have to meet okay and if they do not meet them they aren't aware of them and guess who can educate them us so by doing you know showing the regulation that megan has mm -hmm. either next time or for a family that you know is moving to have for, for them to have at the ready you can be like no dude here's the regulation here's what it says you're incorrect do you want me to call the move coordinator? Do you want me to call quality assurance? Or do you want to go ahead and write this on the list? Because that might save some time. I'm just saying that might save some time. Just be like, here, it's black and white. If you don't believe me, believe the paper. It's right there. Mm -hmm. um, that can be helpful and save a lot of time, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. So uh, yeah, we, we totally did a webinar a couple of things a couple weeks ago now um, on the regulation. So we'll get that link dropped into the comments for y'all. But we go through all of those most commonly asked questions that people have um, within the Lost During My PCS group about, you know, what do I do about this? And there's a regulation on it. And so we walk through all of that. And one of the things we discuss heavily within that webinar is also about the high value items. Um, so it's worth going back when we're done here taking a look at it and seeing uh what those regulations are links are dropped into those comments as well where you can be able to go and take a look as well but the good thing is that the military thinks of these things and there's a regulation for it it's in black and white easy to read and understand your move coordinators and tsps are agreeing to these regulations when they join the dod relocation program um, so it's not like it's something new that somebody just made up and said we're throwing this out there um, Sometimes we know information disseminates doesn't really work well sometimes, but that's why it's always important for you to know what the regulations are and for you to be able to pull them up and say, hey, it says this, this is what we need to do. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So our PCS, and I'll just reiterate what like Isabel and Wendy was saying to us last week. If you haven't seen our last week's, check it out. But, uh, you know, we have to own this PCS. And sometimes mm -hmm. when I think of like, I go into everything thinking about my daughter. She's 22. She's going to go through her first PCS here in the next nine, 12 months, whatever. Um, and she doesn't know at all, but, sh but she's ultimately responsible. This is her stuff and she wants to take care of. You know what I mean? Like, yes, they are supposed to take care of our stuff. But in the same vein, we need to hold somebody accountable. And if we know this information, we can do that. 
and that's fantastic. And we're making it easier for you by dropping these regulations here for you to look at in real time. So own it. And and to sign off with that, we have Shermaine. Shermaine was a past guest of ours. She's got a book geared towards mill kids about PCSing and how you can explain PCSing to them to help them with that transition. So loving the idea, having the regulation on hand. We love that idea too. And we are very happy to see you joining us uh, in the comments here today, Charmaine. So thank you for joining us. Shout out Charmaine. See, once a milk kid, always a milk kid, peeps. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Because we just got, we just like, see, this is what we love about this. We go down the rabbit hole and we talk to, this just leads to more conversations and more talk that Megan can take back to the decision makers for us to have a better PCS. It's just, it's just full circle. Um, yeah. Okay. So next question. So low day comes next. Okay. Yes. How does this day begin? Like, how does this start? Yeah, so load day starts very similar to pack day. You will have a crew that shows up, the driver shows up with the truck, the crates, whatever mode it may be, um, but your crew shows up. So the most important thing to do then is to give them a tour again of the home. They need to see what kind of stuff they're working with so they can configure how to pack it into the crates or how to pack it onto the truck. Um, you know, they need to see if you've got oversized furniture. They need to see, you know, how many beds do you have? How many mattresses? Um, are we talking a lot of big boxes, a lot of small boxes, whatever it is. So you give them a little tour, show them what it is they have to, so they know what they're working with um, kind of deal. And then you just kind of sit back from there. They'll be working on grabbing stuff and pulling it out. A lot of times you'll have some folks that will be strictly pulling things out of the home and they'll be staging it maybe in your garage or in your driveway, depending on weather maybe. And then you usually have a person or two that's um, working with the truck and they are pulling stuff off the driveway out of the garage and, and loading it properly onto the truck as it should be done. Um, one of the big things to know is that if you end up having to truck share, your mattresses should be one of the last things on that your mattresses um, should be used to kind of create the wall between your shipment and the next shipment. That's kind of how industry standard of how they know where one shipment ends and one shipment begins um, is using your mattresses for um, for that wall. But they're going to be taking everything out during this time. Your driver, usually the driver, is walking around with another inventory form. And at this point, they are writing down uh, the furniture that is going um, because they're the ones that are more responsible for the furniture because they're going to be wrapped in uh, usually moving blankets. If you're going Oconus, it's usually the thick, heavy padded paper stuff. Um, but your mover, your driver at this time is walking around writing down all of your furniture pieces or what's called loose load pieces. So like your shovels and rakes that don't really fit into a box um, or if you have a big metal stand in the garage, um, you know, or your bikes, things that can't go into a box are considered loose packed items. All of those items are also being written down on that inventory form that the driver is creating. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna throw this up here because this kind of comes in conjunction with my next question. This is a thing. Mm -hmm. It's gonna cover us up, even though you love our beautiful faces. Trust me, you'll 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 understand. Okay. So Courtney, shout out on fire. One thing that happened to us is the loading day, they weren't working fast at all. It was frustrating because it shouldn't have taken all day. The young new employee packer said, and I quote, they're going slow because they don't want to have to unload this stuff at the warehouse, but don't tell them that I said anything. Here's the thing, here's the thing. And Courtney, I feel you because that's a thing. Timeline is a thing. There's everything is associated with a dollar amount, right? Here and, and an amount of, of effort. But here's the thing. Um, I want to ask you, Megan, what would Courtney do in this situation? Because because she doesn't want to, you know, get this kid fired. And she also doesn't want him to be the pariah of the group. And she also wants her stuff to be loaded properly. And you know what I mean? So it's like a conflict of interest. And I know that you're probably going to say, call the QA, call the move coordinator. But at the same time, right? You like, you know, I see I'm, we have, we have a brain that's like shared right now at the same time. But here's the thing, because sometimes won't that occasionally hold up our move? And in this particular climate, won't that impact some things? So rock hard place help. 
Yeah. So, I mean, so the deal is, okay, so by regulations that they shouldn't be starting a job that they cannot complete by, I believe it's 9 p.m. Um, they should be done by 5 p.m., but they can work until 9 as long as they have your permission to. Um, if for some reason, like, you got to go to your kid's last basketball game at 7 o'clock and you can't have them there until 9, you have every right to stop movement and tell them that they need to come back the next day to finish. So the best thing to do is when you realize that there is going to be a problem is that there is usually a crew lead. There is usually some person that is in charge of the crew leading the way. Sometimes it's the driver. Sometimes the loading crew has their own person. So you find the crew lead and you discuss it with them and you say, hey, you know, I know we have a lot of stuff, whatever it may be. You know, I know it's you know, East Texas, it's hot out here in the summer. Um, but I need this stuff to be loaded by this time because you cannot work past this time um, kind of deal. If you are having any issues, as MJ said, you call your move coordinator or you call your local transportation office. Start with your move coordinator because they can make an easy call to that local agent because they are the ones that contracted that local agent. They have the relationship there. So if something needs to happen, they can make it happen. So you can call and say, hey, it's one o'clock and not even half of my house is loaded onto the truck yet. And they've got six more hours to work until we have to go to my son's basketball game. I don't think this is going to happen. That move coordinator can call the local agent and say, hey, this isn't going well. You're six, seven, however many people out there are not loading this house efficiently time-wise. You need to make something happen. Um, you know, let them be the bad guys. You don't have to be the bad guy in that situation. Voice your concern to the crew lead. And then if you need to make the phone call and let your move coordinator do their job and take care of it for you. And you can do everything, Courtney, because I kind of feel you on the whole, this kid divulged to you kind of what was actually going down and you yeah. don't want to like get him in trouble because otherwise you wouldn't know. You can call the move coordinator and you can tell them, all of what is actually happening without outing him, right? Yeah. Like, like, and saying, you know, like, like, okay, so this is going really slow, probably slower than what I'm used to and what I've experienced. And I need X, Y, and Z. I'm not understanding why this is absolutely unacceptable. They can do so. You don't even have to say, I know why you're doing this and it's not cool, dude. You mm -hmm. can call them out without actually calling them out. And that, is straight from this chick right here because that that whole conflict resolution without outing somebody i'm really good at that mm -hmm. i can do that all day um yeah. so but i but i understand that predicament you know what i mean um but you mentioned a policy and this is a question for me to you megan you mentioned the policy where they have to be out like you know whatever 9 p.m mm -hmm. right i mean like that's bedtime for most peeps whatevs mm -hmm. Are they allowed to extend the next day or is the standard you must get all of this done by this window of time, by 9 p.m., without having to come back the next day? It should be, so if your pickup date is June 15th, your stuff should be picked up June 15th. If they cannot finish the job on June 15th and they have to come back on the sixth and come back another day, it should be the morning of the 16th. By regulation, they are to come back the very next day in the morning to finish the job that they could not finish. And because they cannot finish the job on the day that they agreed upon with you on June 15th, that company can be reprimanded from the military. So if they don't finish it after you call your move coordinator, you know, at 8 a.m. on the next day to say, hey, I'm just verifying my crew is showing up to finish loading today because um, they should be aware of it from the night before. Then your next call is to your local transportation office to say, hey, our agreed pickup was yesterday. They didn't finish it. They're supposed to come back out today. I just want to make sure you're tracking it. I'd appreciate if a QA could come out to our home to see how much still needs to be loaded and how the job is going and they should send somebody out and things should be handled that way. Boom. Um, so really, again, wish you had that. I wish, I wish you were with me. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and then really quick because to tie into this. So Monica's question here is the crew leader, usually the person that does the tour of the house prior to packing. Uh, no, they are not. So the, the tour prior to packing, that's your pre move survey. That's when they come out and they see how much stuff you have. So that way they know how many boxes your house is going to need. They know how many crew members they need to send to pack your home type of deal. There's usually within, so like on packing days, there'll be a crew leader within that crew that shows up on packing day. Somebody that is in charge of that crew in your home. On loading day, there's usually a crew leader within, um, that crew that shows up to load your home. It is not the person that showed up to do your pre-move survey. Okay. Okay. 
Um, wow, you guys are engaging so amazingly because you have all the questions that I wish I knew to ask, but when I didn't know to ask because I was stupid. No, I wasn't stupid because no, no, there is there is never a dumb or stupid question here or anywhere because you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Whether it's your first move or your last, you don't know what you don't know. You came to the right place. No judgment ever, especially with this chick. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk loading. Or let's talk, like, what What are you, okay, I got to the load day comes next. How does it begin? Yeah. We got how it began. What are you doing during load days? Like, what is our role? So load day is another day of being involved, walking around, seeing what's going on, um, seeing, you know, are they going to be done on time that I need them to be done on? Or are we going to have some issues and I need to make a phone call? and let my move coordinator know. I just want to say if that you're, you're going through the process and you feel like your packing is not going to be completed at the end of the last packing day, you feel like your loading is not going to be done on time, as soon as you get that inkling that this isn't going to get finished, call your move coordinator and let them know. The more lead time you give them of, hey, this might be an issue, the more time they have to work with that local agent to figure out what needs to happen. Maybe they need to send an extra person or two to your house to get that, to get your home packed up. Maybe they need to send an extra person or two during your low day to help get the rest of your home finished. So as soon as you realize like, this isn't going to go well, we're not going to finish, call your move coordinator, give them that, um, that that lead time to where they can be able to address the issues but during during the packing days um you know i'm walking around i'm seeing what's happening i'm watching you know as as dustin says you know keeping it real weird and watching every move like i'm i'm standing there watching them wrap my wooden headboard i'm you know watching them wrap my couch you know to make sure it's going to be wrapped properly um my husband usually walks with the person doing the furniture inventory and my husband likes to make them point out every little um, p uh, damage assessment code that they're going to write down you know the scratches the dents the gouges or whatever my husband is very good at arguing back of you know like he'll, he'll wipe something off that's not a scratch that's a dust and they don't write it down then um yeah let my husband <laughs> handle that piece um but i walk around i see what they're doing um this is also a great time that you need to double check things again um, open up those cabinets. I know you think like a box doesn't fit in the cabinet. You would be surprised where a small book box can be able to fit at um, in cabinets. Open up closet doors. Check behind the doors. Again, if you had some artwork that was packed into the mirror boxes and maybe they slid it behind the door because it was out of the way where they could continue working, double check behind those doors to make sure everything is taken out. Um, the, it is the worst thing in the world your truck drives away, you walk back in, you do your one last sweep, you know, as you gather your last odds and ends, you know, to head to the hotel for the night. And you find a wardrobe box standing in your closet. And you have no room in your truck or in your car to put an upright wardrobe box. And you're wondering, <laughs> what in the world do we do now? Um, so take the time and walk around when they say, Okay, I think we're done. I think we got it all go walk around, grab a, one of the crew members to walk with you. So if a box is found, they can pick it up and take it with them. Um, but it's important to walk around, be involved again, uh, see what it is they're doing and to double check everything. You're absolutely right. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's stressful, but it's like, it's going to help you out in the long run, especially like, you know, after this, there's a claims process, which we have gone over. And again, we'll go over again with you. But to mitigate that, this is like the anti that, right? Prep is the anti that. Expectations, setting your expectations is exactly that, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay. So, and we've done, and we've done stuff with kids, what to do with kids when we're PCSing. Because um, Dustin, I feel you. Um, but if you're walking, or if you're both walking around, with movers, right? What do you do with your young kiddos who are probably all up in everything? If they're anything like my milk kid 2.0, mom of a five-year-old and a 16 month old, God bless you. That's extremely mobile. So what are they doing? Like what, what, like, do we get the leashes? Do we like, just like backstrap them and straight jacket that thing? What do we do? <laughs> Um, so for your five year old, um, my older kids, electronics can entertain them well. Our last move, they sat on the couch and they watched TV until the movers came and said, Okay, I need your couch to put on the truck now and I need to 
take your TV apart to put on the truck now. Um, you know, so sometimes you have those options for young mobile toddlers. Um, you know, this is going to sound bad. Please don't judge. We love each other here. Um, but if you can steal a box from the moving company, one of the larger boxes, and you put it together and you washable markers, washable markers, y'all, because our kids, washable markers, put together a box, put your kid in, and <laughs> give them the markers. They will be occupied for the longest time ever. My kids, when they were young, they thought that was the coolest thing in the world, that they had a box that they could color all over, and mom wasn't going to yell at them. It saved my walls so, so many times. Uh, you know, so if your child is interested in coloring things, I mean, a box and markers can go a long way. Um, also, sometimes kids want to feel important, like they are, you know, in the process and, and helping. Um, you know, they, they always feel like they did such a great thing when they could help. So sometimes movers are really great with kids. Um, mine have, have handed uh, furniture blankets to movers, like, you know, they pick it up, they'd hand it to the guy and he'd take it and he'd put it on the dresser and put a strap around it. And then my kid would hand them another moving blanket and they would put it on and wrap another strap around it. Uh, you know, so if you have a, a great crew that, you know, doesn't mind, you know, working an extra minute slower to allow the kid to help here and there. I mean, it, it goes a long way to them being occupied and not melting down and your child feeling like, you know, they saved the world handing the guy a moving blanket. Just a word on what I've just put up here with Shermaine, because shout out Shermaine. I mean, like, hi, milk it extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. uh, let them, you know, all kids love the boxes over anything that, you know, is contained with inside box. Birthdays, <laughs> it doesn't matter. The box right. is the thing. Um, yes. and, and that starts at any age, mm -hmm. including my age. So let, taking that bubble wrap and putting that inside of a bigger box and then just like that, like contained fun, like, like world's easiest freaking mm -hmm. like not jail but you know yeah and we'll talk about like delivery day later but the same thing for delivery day Dustin. if you need to sit outside under a tree or in your garage to check off inventory numbers and you know my child wants to be into everything i mean get another big box as charmaine said put the bubble wrap inside of it put that box right next to you as you sit in your camping chair with your clipboard you know, hand them one marker at a time, tell them to draw something green, draw something orange. While you check off your numbers, I mean, it's a way to keep contained fun, as we said, um, as Charmaine said. So, I mean, boxes and markers and bubble wrap can go a long way. A long way. <laughs> See, it's all about the imagination. Yeah. All right, last question, and I promise we'll get to yours, because, man, y'all, this is because it's peak PCS season, we have no problems going over with you, because that's how we roll, and you're super engaged. So the last mm -hmm. question for you that we've pre-prepared, Megan, again, there's usually another inventory, right, after loading day, right? So what is this for, and why, what is important to know about it? So this inventory is going to be the inventory for your furniture and loose packed items. This is the inventory that your driver is usually the driver puts together um, because your driver is responsible for the condition of your furniture. Now, the important thing to know about this inventory is you're going to see something that looks like a bunch of gibberish. It's going to be a lot of um, letters and numbers. It's going to say like 2S. C, 5, S, O type of deal. Um, the numbers correspond to a location on the item, either front corner, left corner, tops, right side, left side kind of deal. Um, and then the number or the letters correspond to a condition. So S, O is soiled, S, C is scratched, D is dented, W is worn. Um, you know, there is a, on your inventory form, it's usually at the top, there is a little key that has all those numbers and letters in them so you don't need to memorize them. They're all right there. But those codes are supposed to correspond to the current condition of your furniture. So if you have a footboard and there's a scratch or a dent on the footboard because your kid came in there with their Nerf gun and they couldn't hold it and they dropped it on it because they were also jumping on the bed or whatever, um, they, will know, they will know that there is a dent on the top of the footboard. Uh, what they should not be doing is marking that your footboard is scratched, chipped, dented, gouged, whatever. Um, sometimes we see some crews that they mark everything in the book under an item, and they try to do that to kind of protect themselves in a way. Um, so that way, 
scratches happen in moves. I mean, I expect when we move, my dresser will have another little scratch somewhere. The table will probably have another little scratch somewhere. Sometimes it happens trying to get onto the truck. Sometimes your truck hits a big bump and it rubs against the side of um, the truck a little bit, you know, so I expect a few things like that to happen. What should not be happening is the negligent damage that we sometimes see. Uh, you know, but those damage assessment codes are there to identify the current condition of your furniture. Now, some people, like my husband, will walk with the uh, driver, with the person that's doing it, and they will discuss the damage codes before they are written down. Um, other people will take pictures of their current for other furniture in current condition. We do that. Some people will say, show me the, what damage you're writing down. And they take a picture of it right there to note that this is what we're writing down. Um, if they are writing down damage assessment codes that you do not agree with, you have every right to take that inventory, circle, asterisk, star the inventory numbers. And in the comments section, you can write that you do not agree with the damage assessment codes written and then initial it. Do that before you sign it, because once you sign it, you are agreeing to the inventory as it's written. So if you're gonna disagree with anything, note it before you sign it, but you have every right to say, I don't agree with this. Um, you know, and that way then if your table that they say was scratched and dented shows up and it's scratched and dented, but you have a picture to show that it was not before it left your possession, then you can use that to say, hey, that wasn't the condition that it was in. And you should be able to file your claim without issue. Well, that was a lot. No, it was a lot. <laughs> but you know what? That was it's necessary. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, um, so there was something in here. Stand by because y'all were on fire. Um about the damage assessment codes. Uh you know what? If you have it in front of you, you put it because there's been several. Uh, so you put it in front of you. Um, oh, where did it go? Where did it go? Right. So that's how awesome you guys are, is that we are having to filter through all of these. And that's cool. Um, just for the record, like in the event that we can answer these live, Courtney. Are, me and me and me and Megan, we go on the back end after the webinar. We have a webinar after action and we filter through these questions and we try to answer them like in real time. Drop the links, whatever mm -hmm. you need. Um, but go ahead. Go ahead, um, Meg. Yeah, so this one from Courtney that we were told all furniture will be marked soiled. They said if it's open, it's considered soiled. Our furniture was perfect. I wrote that I disagree. Is this true? What you were told um, is not true. They should not be marking everything as soiled, dented, scratched, worn, whatever. Um, I've heard multiple different excuses for things. They should be marking it as the current condition that it is in. Um, I had a friend that had, again, a brand new table. It was delivered like three days before they moved. Um, a lot of people say, why in the world would you do that? But I mean, when you when you have a really great deal and there's a really great sale at Nebraska Furniture Mart, you kind of jump on it and take advantage of it when you know you're not going to have a great furniture store like that where you're moving to. Um, but it was new and you could tell it was new and they still wrote it up as being soiled, worn, dented, scratched, gouged, everything in the book. And she was just like, there's no way like it's like look like show me where it's dented and the driver couldn't give an, an answer so you can totally write as you said I wrote that I disagreed on it that's exactly what you should do write that you do not agree with the damage assessment codes if you feel like they are doing it excessively um you know and you have furniture that is new you have furniture I have one friend they take their all their upholstered items so like their couches their love seats their recliners and stuff and they get them professionally cleaned like Stanley Steamer, whoever, before they move, so that way when their crew shows up to do this inventory, they there's no stains on it, there's no you know cat hair left on it or anything, so it's perfectly clean for them, um, and they don't have to worry about you know them trying to say it's soiled and stained or whatever. Like it's professionally cleaned. They have the receipt; they can show it was professionally cleaned. Um, so some people go to those extents. Um, you can if you want to. You certainly don't have to. But it should be the current damage assessment codes that are written on there. Um, and then like here with Gina, her comment, I watch real close when they wrap furniture. Don't need any mysterious rips, scrapes, or cuts to appear on a thin air. And that's another one we hear a lot too is that furniture, especially couches, you know, there might be a rip somewhere on the couch and it could be that it again rubbed something wrong on the truck when they were putting it in 
Um, you know, maybe there was a screw sticking out somewhere and it got caught on that kind of deal. Um, it happens. So again, if you don't agree with what the damage assessment codes are, just write that you don't agree with it. Um, initial it and then you can sign it. You're muted. You're muted. You almost oh my, made it. I you almost almost made it, everybody. I almost made it without being muted. And just for the record, you know, a lot of you, we're going to get back to you an hour and 10 minutes. I'm so surprised. Um, there's one person I want to shout out um, really quick. Her name is Elizabeth Cook. Elizabeth, I've got your number. I've got what you're saying. Um, she was kind of, one of the things that she did was printed out PCS grades movers notice. Uh, I'm just going to really quick share my screen and show you what that is because you can go over to uh, PCS grades and, you know, download this and uh, hand it to your movers. It's kind of like a, uh, we're setting the standards, people. You yeah. go to PCS grades, right? You'll go ahead and just sign up an account. It's free. Um, and then you're going to go over to resources and you're going to hit helpful downloads. And here we have a full PCS checklist, we have movers notice, and we have a PPM Diddy checklist, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but this movers notice, let me show you what that looks like. It literally says, hey, to the team at whomever your movers are, we want to thank you in advance for caring for our families, household goods, and other treasured items as part of our relocation. We look forward to rewarding your company by sharing a great review on PCS grades with all of our fellow military and veteran families. Here are some of the criteria that we will use to brag about this experience. Their professionalism and customer service, timeliness and promptness, packing quality, labeling and inventory descriptions, minimal loss or damage to the property, cleanliness of company materials and interaction and responsiveness during the claims process. All of this stuff is saying, hey, FYI, we're putting you on notice without actually having to say, hey, we're putting you on notice. It's literally saying, if you do a good job, we're going to tell everybody you're doing a good job. We all fill out surveys, but sometimes we need to fill out surveys when they're good as well as bad. And if they want to be a good reflection of the company they represent, then they will, knowing ahead about it, that you're going to be doing this, they may pay a little bit closer of attention. So just to see what happens. It never hurts as a buffer, right, Meg? Absolutely. Um, so, right, that movers notice can go a long way. And then, you know, we just ask that you come back to PCS grades and fill out a review for your company at the end of your PCS. Um, you know, let other military families know how well that company did for you. And if there were any issues, you know, you can always note it in there as well. For sure. Okay, so without further ado, and FYI, everybody, we're going back within the next few minutes, we're gonna be answering your questions. If we didn't get to you, we got you. Yeah. Stand by, we're doing the Wheel of Names for the $25 gift card for Hope Design Limited. Ready? All right, pulling up the wheel of names. And while I'm pulling up the wheel of names, Megan, why don't you go ahead and do our audience a solid and tell them about the big stuff we're doing next week and that they can't miss. So next week, so we know that this season is crazy. There's a lot going on. A lot more people are doing PPMs because there is such a capacity and labor issue within the moving industry right now. So next week, we are very fortunate that we are going to have uh, Chuck White and Dan Bradley from IAM, International Association of Movers, on with us. They are a repeat guest. We had them on a couple of weeks ago when we talked about preparing for peak, uh, for peak season. And now we're going to have them on again to get an update as to what is going on with peak season. Why are we having the issues we are having? What are some solutions that are taking place with them? And additionally, about those PPMs, where can you find a reputable moving company? What are red flags that you should be aware of? And if you have a problem with your PPM company, where can you go to tell somebody to file a complaint and how to handle that? So if you know anybody that's moving and they need some information about the issues going on or they're doing a PPM or you're preparing and planning to do your own PPM, you definitely want to come and join us next week as we talk all of that good stuff. Absolutely. And so you don't, you seriously don't want to miss this. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, I apologize ahead of time, people, because this is my brain. Okay. $25 e-gift card to Hope Design Limited, whether this is for yourself, go ahead and splurge, you know, self-care is a thing. 
or for a friend who is moving across the way and you just want to say farewell and following seas to them, you can hit them up at uh, Hope Design. So we're going to go to that wheel of names. By the way, people, go ahead and take a look at this wonderful, huge, amazing wheel. Um, and this is all due to you because you're going to be sharing this with military families. Mm -hmm. And this information does no good in our heads. So here we go. And we're going to get a drum roll. I mean, if I have to play the drums myself, we will in progress. So Megan, are you ready? Yes, let's do it. All right. And the winner of the $25 Hope Design Limited gift certificate is <laughs> the Milk Kid Extraordinaire herself, Charmaine Perry Knights. Woo! Congratulations, Charmaine. Yes. We will be in touch because we do have your information. Because mm -hmm. once you're hooked up with PCS grades, we're here for you. Don't, life. You don't get rid of us. You don't. But yes, make sure you mark it on your calendars. Next week, we're doing it on Thursday at 12 p.m. Central. We have the International Association of Movers to talk to us about this big PPM, personally procured move slash ditty rush that's happening in our community. And if you hear of somebody who is you know, kind of unexpectedly having to do this, go ahead and throw them our way, tag them in the post. You'll see us Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern time. Come ask those questions that need to be asked. Share away. But until next week, Megan? This too shall PCS. Bye, everybody. Bye.